Yeah, I'm here with the 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport 2 liter turbo edition. Oh, we're gonna find out if it's any good. Don't worry about that. I'll let you know, just watch the video. Talk to you later. Okay, that's enough of that. This is the 2015 Hyundai Sonata. One word can describe the styling of this vehicle from the outside, and that is neutralized. Hyundai decided that they were gonna make this more sophisticated, more grown up, which meant taking a magic eraser to all the character lines that made the car stand out to begin with. You can decide on your own whether the styling is a, an improvement or a step backward. The front features daytime running lights, or daytime LED running lights, LED tail lights, and just a whole host of other smooth looking features that they've included here on the exterior. Overall, this was kind of developed in the same fashion or the same generation in terms of styling as the Genesis sedan. So a lot of focus was put on interior cabin comfort, quietness, and simplicity. So Scott, we're standing in front of the uh, brand new, all new 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport mm. 2.0 Turbo. Fantastic. What do you think about the underbody here? <laughs> it's very flat. <laughs> it's flat black. This is the Lotus of mid-sized cars because there are aero panels all the way down, all the way back, except they are this cardboardish. I don't really technically know what this composite material is made of, but the whole car underbody is covered with it. So you can't really see anything. But we're Except gonna for the coolant link that's up there. Yeah, there is a coolant link up there, but I, to be fair, as I said, this car is 13,000 miles, and after this, it's going to the junkyard. We're the last people to get it <laughs> in the press car. Going to a lemons car. race. <laughs> going to a lemons race. Um, so the amount of miles, 13,000, is probably the equivalent of like 100K. So if we take a look at the front of this car, everything's covered up again, but you can just see here that it's got strut-based front suspension. Uh, you can't even tell if it's got camber adjustment, can you? Because of this it covers on everything. I doubt it. These usually don't have any adjustments here. No, these... And this is definitely not adjustable. We could put some eccentric bolts in there. We're gonna need maximum camber for this thing because we're gonna do the time attack next week in this. <laughs> the time attack to see how soon we can put it into a ditch. There's camber and tow adjustment on the back of the Sonata, Scott. What do you think of that? Is it on both sides or just the right side? No, it's on both sides. Wow. It has alumi uh, aluminum knuckles too. Yeah, it's got aluminum knuckles. Look at that. Look how long that damper is. Holy Christ. Is that for off-road? <laughs> it's, it's off the TNC. Jeez. So what were you saying about this exhaust? It's great if you have to replace this muffler because you can unbolt it right there. Okay. Put the new one on. But if this one goes bad, you can buy the whole thing. Can't you just? Well, you, yeah, you could cut it. and. But if you're going to order this muffler from the dealer, or you're going to order this one from the dealer, you're going to get this whole pipe. You can't probably just buy that. Point is, is this is weird stuff that manufacturers do because people want it. You know, they, they study all the stuff that people want in cars and they figure out, well, it looks cool. It's the same thing as the 18 and 19 inch wheel package they put on cars. People don't know how much tires are gonna cost. Until they have to buy them, and oh my Lord. Yeah, and they freak out. It's the same thing with the dual exhaust. They're like, well, people think it looks cool. We gotta put it on. And then when it comes time to replace it, either, you know, it rots out on one side or the other. And it's, it's just kind of pointless. This serves no purpose except for appearance. Mm-hmm. Word. What would you say the, the replacement stuff on here is? Oh, spin around. What the hell, what does this say in, in yellow? 12-volt AGM battery. What does AGM mean? Absorb glass mat. 
So some of these batteries we've been looking up are, if they come with the AGM battery, like on the TNC, it's like 300 bucks and you have to put that battery back in. So we get under here. What do we got under here, Scott, under this foam? The distributor. Yeah, that looks like a distributor. And it's got spark plug wires. It looks like it distributes fuel, maybe. Oh. But that's actually a good idea. You know, you heard all the FRS people crying about how their high pressure fuel pump chirps. That's Hyundai's solution right Just there, people. It Just cover it up with some huge foam, some sound insulation. Mm -hmm. What else we got over here? This is a turbo motor, two liter. Where's the turbo? Underneath this monster contraption. That's your twin scroll turbo. Look at that. What is a pivot in there? What's That's a five wire sensor. So? Well, it gets lots of information then. Probably got a wide band. Yeah. You need a wide band need for a turbo fuel car. Gauge on the pillar then. Where's the intercooler? Oh, right there. It's huge, bro. Look at that. It is big. I know it's. I figured it was gonna be a little tiny thing. Right. I mean, the Volkswagen ones are tiny. Oh, bro. They, they should have did a V6 in this. I'm sorry. That's. This is why they got rid of the V6 because this thing makes the same power or more. I know, but a four-cylinder feels like a four-cylinder. And I, you, you could blindfold me, put me in any car, and I'll tell you if it's a four-cylinder or not. They all feel the same. Now, if you can tell the difference between an inline six and inline five, V6, V8, you can't tell the difference between the idle. You can't. They sound smoother. Four cylinders always, they rattle. That's a nice greeting. Of course, I had to uh, pull over the car because I my apple went flying and I couldn't find it. And let me tell you, an apple a day does not keep the doctor away because I got a, a doctor's appointment to have my knee looked at from all the hardcore driving I've been doing. So getting in the Sonata is a different experience because this is your mainstream mid-size car that's actually more like a large size car when you get into the dimensions of it. Uh, this is the car that a majority of the people are going to live with every day. Yep. Hyundai has a website called Hyundai Think Tank, or now it's Hyundai Listens, where owners in a closed group can go and talk to Hyundai press managers, uh, product planners, and even a couple years ago, you could talk to the CEO on live chats about what you wanted with Hyundai cars. And the truth is, a lot of what the Hyundai Sonata is now is from all the feedback that actual owners of Hyundai cars gave Hyundai about the things they wanted. And this is a byproduct of that because that's really how Hyundai helps to design their cars and bring new cars to market is actual owner feedback, if you can believe it. And we're gonna go through some of the twisties here. I'm gonna go into manual mode, if you could call it that, and sport mode, uh, which kind of gives you a little bit more control. Let's take a look at how this thing handles. Oh, I gotta turn traction control off too. There we go. Whoa, <laughs> holy shit. Does this thing understeer? <laughs> Come on, downshift. No, it's not gonna downshift. Okay, th this is the first car I've been in where I almost felt like it was ripping the car off the road. Um, it understeers that bad, it pushes that bad. And that's partially because of the power band of this vehicle. shifts for you uh, once you reach the red line it takes even though you're in manual mode it just auto up shifts for you which is very annoying let's take a quick look at the acceleration of the two liter turbo I'm not even gonna bother using manual mode because it just up shifts for you anyway uh, but the acceleration is, the only way I can describe this car is all the power is right at the beginning. You're never going to drive a car like this 
flat out all the time. And Hyundai has tuned this car specifically to give you the power really down low when you're just driving around normally. It always feels like it's a lot faster than it is when you're just driving it more slow. One of the other things I really like about the car uh, is even when you're in automatic mode and just eco mode or whatever mode you choose, and I would just honestly leave it in eco mode anyway because it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it might stiffen up the steering wheel a little bit, uh, but it's very hard to notice if you're going to be an average driver. But in eco mode, you know, you're going to get your best fuel economy. The transmission is going to be just not as eager to rev and downshift and it's gonna keep you in that zone where you're getting the best fuel economy. Now again, we're gonna go through some twisties here and just see exactly how this car is uh, to handle again. Okay. Pretty compliant over the bumps. Brakes are average. The ride is pretty supple. Um, it, it's soft, it's compliant, uh, it doesn't feel jarring, it's not over dampened. Uh, this is just a mainstream riding car that's gonna feel good on most conditions. Uh, I don't particularly like how soft the front end is, uh, but again, this car's best suit, as I've found, is highway driving. This car is really quiet, really smooth, and uh, just comfortable to be in. Uh, you can listen to the music, you can hear it clearly, your Bluetooth phone calls are clear. Uh, it's a really good cruising car, and the passenger and driver comfort is very good. Now, the suspension isn't, you know, particularly, it's not great, but it's better than what they've been doing. Uh, I don't think it's class leading by any stretch, but it's, it's a non-offensive ride. It, it's not overly harsh, and it's not overly soft. But again, it is what it is. This is a mainstream car. I don't think Hyundai ever decided they were gonna go for best in class here uh, on overall interior quality. Just little details are not here in the driving experience. I just want you to listen to the turn signal for about 20 minutes. I want you to experience what I'm experiencing right now. Oh, here it's gonna get louder now. It makes you not wanna use your turn signals, I swear. I wish there was a way to disable the, the tone or just change the volume of it through the menu because you can change a lot of other things through the menus of this car. Yeah, I, I don't, here's the other thing, right? I just tried to get through this light because it changed excessively fast. Here's the thing I have a problem with with this car is I don't understand what the point of having 18 inch wheels and tires on this sport package when they don't have any grip. I mean, if you do any type of turning and accelerating, whether you intend to do it or not, because of the way the power band is, these tires just start squealing. It, it can't handle turning and acceleration at the same time. And that typically wouldn't be an issue if your power delivery was higher in the RPM range. But with this car, no sir. When you get in the Sonata Sport for the first time, you kind of look at these seats from an outside perspective and you're like, uh, I don't know if those are gonna be uncomfortable. The truth is, is they're extremely comfortable when you get in here. You wouldn't think it, especially with how loud the stitching is and the embossed turbo logo, whether that's your thing or not, close your eyes, sit in here, and you're gonna be in it for a comfortable experience. There's a ton of leg room. Uh, the front cabin is really comfortable. Uh, the back leg room is equally as large, and there's enough room in the back to have a complete spaz attack in comfort. I've already tried it. When you see me talk about cars recently, I'm a stickler for attention to detail. And in the case of the Sonata, there's not a lot of attention to detail here. Now, in some ways there is, because ergonomically, and ease of use, it's all here. Uh, but in terms of plastics and some of the design materials, it, it's really 
uh, questionable. For example, the actual door armrest where you rest your arm, it's just hard plastics. There's hard plastics everywhere. This silver material on the dash, uh, it, it just, it looks like plastic with the little stamps of graphics on it. It just doesn't look particularly good. But then I can forgive a lot of that because when you look at the, the fit and finish of like the center stack with the HVAC controls, the knobs are really you know, feel good to the finger, the tactile feedback's there. The simplicity and ease of use is here. And I can kind of forgive that it's just all stuck in here like a Lego. It just feels like really generically laid out, but sometimes generic is good for simplicity and long-term use. There's no question about where things are at or what they do. Now I kind of went off about how the quality is in here in terms of plastics and some of the fit and finish, but the ergonomic stuff, the usable stuff is here. Now case in point, what do you do with this key fob, right? This Hyundai key fob, it's not particularly big, but typically you have it in your pocket. Well, there is actually a place here that fits it perfectly in the center console. And it's stuff like that all around this interior, from the sunglass holder, to the door cup holder storage, to the center cup holder storage, to the armrest. There's a plethora of space in here to store whatever you want. When you look at the center stack, as much as I really like how simple and easy this is to use, it's great and it's laid out super for most people, but I feel like it's needlessly large. This, there's so much wasted space here that they could trim this down. They could do a lot of things here, but more importantly, it's not really symmetrical here because you have this plastic, this hard plastic that runs on the passenger side and you don't have it over here. And my guess is you don't have it over here because they want to create more right leg room, which is great, but more hard plastic. And when you want to rest your elbows, your joints, your knees, somewhere you don't want to be resting it on a hard surface because over time it just gets uncomfortable. How much would it really cost Hyundai here to pad this with a piece of vinyl or something? Something so your knee feels comfortable resting. It's a little detail. It's the detail work that's missing on a lot of this. The last thing I'm going to cover is interior lighting or interior illumination at night. And this is not something talked about in reviews typically. And it's not something that a lot of buyers even notice because you're gonna test drive a car during the day. You may not even know what it looks like at night until you bring it home. In the case of the Sonata, all the interior illuminations from the knobs and switches is ice blue LED, like this cold blue light. And when I talk about this, the only way I can explain it to people is when you go home, would you put a blue bulb anywhere in your house? Would you put a blue tinted bulb in your bedroom or your kitchen? Uh, typically, nobody would say yes because you want warm, comfortable lighting in a living space. Now, in a, a car is a little bit different. It is an interior space, it's a little bit different, but I feel like the blue in here makes it feel extremely sterile and cold all the time. Now, my bigger problem is the inconsistency in the lighting. When you go to the gauge cluster on here, the gauges are white. The tachometer and the speedometer are white backlit. And then the center LCD screen is whitish green. It has a hue of green in it. So the center LCD doesn't match the gauge color and then everything else is blue. This feels completely out of place with the rest of the car. So my point is notice it. If you don't like blue lights, you're probably not gonna like this interior.